Progenesis is a new flask added in Path of Exile patch 320, designed by top racer Ben and dropping from the Uber Maven boss fight. There's been some confusion about how this flask works, with a recently deleted Reddit thread going as far as to claim that the flask is bugged. This video is meant to dispel that confusion and clarify what Progenesis does and does not do. When you take damage from a hit with Progenesis active, 25% of the resulting life loss is applied over 4 seconds instead of being lost up front. So, if you take 400 damage, you will lose 300 life instantly, and the remaining 100 will be lost over 4 seconds, at a rate of 25 life per second. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, not always. Now, if you're familiar with the videos I made on Petrified Blood back when that skill came out in Ultimatum League, you can probably guess where this is going. I'll start by once again pointing out that in Path of Exile there is a difference between taking damage and losing life. Taking damage can lead to losing life, but these are two separate steps in the game's calculations. Furthermore, there are ways to lose life that don't count as taking damage. For instance, spending life to use skills and losing life over time from Rite of Ruin both count as life loss but not damage taken. Taking 100 damage often leads to losing 100 life, but not always. For example, if you have energy shield, then some or all of the damage you take may cause energy shield loss instead of life loss. In general, any mechanics that would redirect damage to HP pools other than life, such as Mind Over Matter, Molten Shell, and Ward, will cause the life you lose to be different from the damage you take. The important thing to understand about Progenesis is that it only interacts with life loss, not damage taken, not energy shield loss, not mana loss, and so on. This means it won't work with Chaos Inoculation or other setups for which Energy Shield is the primary HP resource. It also loses some efficiency with Mind Over Matter and other builds with secondary HP pools like Ward and Guard Skills. Some users on Reddit, after doing some testing, concluded that the flask was bugged and not actually delaying the full 25% of life loss listed on the item. However, I suspect that the testing was flawed and done with a non-zero amount of Energy Shield. If so, since some of the damage was taken from Energy Shield, only the portion dealt to the life bar was being split into upfront and over time life loss. Because a smaller portion of the damage was delayed, it appeared that the flask was bugged. To demonstrate that the flask is working as intended, I've bought one on Standard League. For my testing, I will cause myself to take damage using the Heartbound Loop Ring, which makes me take 350 damage whenever a minion dies. I will cast Summon Skeleton, and I should take a total of 700 damage when both skeletons expire. I have zero physical damage reduction, so I should take the full 700 damage. Without Progenesis active, the 700 damage should cause me to instantly lose 700 life. Sure enough, I lose 700 life. Now, with the flask active, 25% of that life loss is prevented, instead being applied over the next 4 seconds. This means 525 life should be lost up front, and the remaining 175 over time. Clearly I'm still losing 700 life, but it's a little hard to tell precisely how much is lost right away versus over time. To solve this, I'm now socketing in Dissolution of the Flesh, which causes life that is damaged to be reserved instead of lost. Now when I do the test, you can see that 525 life is reserved, plus 1 due to rounding. This means that Progenesis is working as intended. Now let's see what happens when some of the damage is applied to an HP pool other than life. I would use Energy Shield for this test, but Dissolution of the Flesh removes Energy Shield, so I'm using Ward instead. With 150 Ward, only 550 damage is taken from life. Progenesis then uses this 550 life loss and splits it into 413 life loss up front and 137 life loss over 4 seconds. This is what I think is causing some to incorrectly conclude that the flask is bugged. That's all the important stuff. The rest of the video is for clarifying some interactions between Progenesis and some other specific skills and items, as well as offering my overall thoughts on the usefulness of the flask. If all you wanted was the basics, you can stop watching here. Okay, so the first question I'm sure to be asked at this point is, how does Progenesis interact with Petrified Blood? The answer is that they stack multiplicatively, with Progenesis applying first. Let's use a level 21 0% quality Petrified Blood as an example. It prevents 40% of life loss, applying 80% of that 40% over 4 seconds. In our previous example with 700 damage taken, Progenesis caused 525 life to be lost immediately and 175 life to be lost over 4 seconds. Petrified Blood now prevents 40% of the remaining 525 life loss, which is 210. Thus, only 315 life is lost immediately. Then, 80% of 210 is 168, which is how much life loss over time you would get from Petrified Blood. Altogether, we have 315 life lost up front and 343 life lost over 4 seconds, for a total of 658 life lost. Here's the testing to verify this. The numbers are seemingly rounded up to 316 instead of 315, and 344 instead of 343, but otherwise it's exactly as predicted. There's a really interesting interaction here between Petrified Blood and Dissolution of the Flesh that I'd like to expand on later in the video. 
Now I want to demystify Progenesis' interactions with certain mechanics that track either damage taken or life lost. Remember that Progenesis doesn't affect damage taken in any way. Even if some of the life loss is delayed, all the damage is still taken up front. This matters for things like cast when damage taken. If I take 700 damage, and Progenesis delays 175 of that damage, the hit will still contribute a full 700 to the threshold for cast when damage taken. This means the flask will not break cast when damage taken builds. However, I should note that the flask doesn't work with ward loop builds, because ward prevents life loss by redirecting damage away from life. Another major misconception about Progenesis is whether its life loss over time effect counts as damage over time or not. The life loss over time is not damage over time. In fact, it isn't considered damage at all. The damage was all dealt up front. Progenesis only alters when you lose the life. Consequently, the life loss over time cannot be mitigated by any defensive layers, including those that mitigate damage over time. The only way to reduce the life loss over time is to mitigate the hit dealing the damage in the first place. This also matters for any mechanics that track whether you're taking damage over time, when you stop taking damage over time, or whether you've been damaged recently. For instance, energy shield recharge is not interrupted by Progenesis's life loss over time effect. Some mechanics track life loss, not damage taken. For example, a savage hit is defined as any hit which removes at least 15% of your maximum life. Because Progenesis decreases the amount of life lost from a hit, it can turn savage hits into non-savage hits, despite not altering damage taken. The other major interaction with mechanics that track life loss specifically is with Dissolution of the Flesh, which I said I'd expand on further. Dissolution of the Flesh completely prevents all upfront life loss from hits, and causes you to reserve that amount of life instead. Now, if your life is full, that reservation would cause your life to drop by that same amount anyway, except it's worse because now it's reserved and can't be recovered for at least two seconds. However, if your life is not full, then your life doesn't have to drop to make room for the reservation. You may have noticed in my testing that when Dissolution of the Flesh reserved life with Petrified Blood active, no life was lost immediately. This means that Dissolution of the Flesh allows a Petrified Blood build to still use the top half of its life bar as an HP buffer, massively increasing its effective HP. Adding Progenesis to the mix further boosts that buffer. One final mechanical note is that Progenesis doesn't interact with life lost from things other than taking damage from hits. Damage over time is still taken as usual, without any of it being delayed by the flask. Furthermore, life loss that isn't associated with damage at all doesn't work with Progenesis. For instance, life spent on skill costs and life sacrificed by things like Dark Pact and Vol Righteous Fire don't come from taking damage, so none of that life loss will be delayed by Progenesis. In closing, I'll give my two cents on whether the flask is actually good or not. If you're playing a life-based build that doesn't have significant secondary HP pools like Energy Shield or Mind Over Matter, then yes, this flask is quite good. If you have 6,000 life, then with Progenesis active, you would need to take 8,000 damage from hits to die immediately. That's 33% more effective HP against big damage spikes of all damage types, provided you have the recovery to counteract the overtime life loss. Even if you do use some secondary HP pools, but are primarily life-based, Progenesis is still great at less than 100% efficiency. Given that Progenesis is a flask, it's not going to be a 100% reliable defensive layer unless you build around flask charge generation or stick to content in which you can generate enough charges anyway. Because of the flask's interaction with Petrified Blood, I suspect that builds using Petrified Blood should pretty much always use Progenesis. If any of those Pathfinder Petrified Blood builds that stack flask recovery still exist, I imagine they'd really want this flask. I'll probably try to make a build using Petrified Blood and Dissolution of the Flesh at some point this leak. That should do it for this video. If I've missed anything, feel free to post questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.